up uh, what's up everybody max max works here and we're finally back on another motorcycle doing another review so today i am sitting on this 2009 yamaha v-star 1300 now i apologize if i sound a little congested it's because i am i uh, got a little bit of a cold but we're just going to power our way through it and uh, do a good review here so let's briefly talk about what is a yamaha v-star now V-Star is, in my opinion, one of the best affordable uh, cruiser bikes on the market. And they make a whole range of them from a 650, which a lot of people cut their teeth on. They make a, a 900, an 1100, a 1300, and then a big boy 1800. Now I don't know that every displacement is available for every year, but those are the, uh, the common sizes. And the one I'm sitting on today is a 1300. I have owned a 650, a 900, and I have ridden an 1100. And to be honest with you, the 1300 I feel is my favorite. I've never ridden an 1800, but I imagine it's very similar to this, just with a bit more torque. My biggest concern uh, when I had the 900, and you guys can look up the video, it's in my in my video history, I did a review on that bike, was that it just it didn't quite have enough uh, legs on the highway to do 80 miles an hour, you know, all day long. It was very buzzy. This bike is just right. Uh, in my opinion, the 1100s are a little weak too, but the 1300 is perfect. This bike really isn't meant to do more than 85 or 90 miles an hour. It gets buzzy over that, but you can pass people on the highway in top gear without the whole thing feeling because it's gonna vibrate apart. And the reason these are one of my favorite, I call them affordable cruiser bikes, is because they're usually very inexpensive, um, they're extremely reliable, and they're affordable without being cheap. And it's it's a very fine line between being affordable and being cheap. And what like all the fit and finish, the parts are pretty decent. Um, there's a lot of a lot of Yamaha parts been stuff. The brakes are um, less than impressive. You know the forks are pretty conventional, but at the same time, it does everything really well. This specific uh, V-Star is a uh, cruiser model, which means it's kind of modeled after a fat boy. It's got a big front tire. Uh, it makes it very comfortable to ride. Originally, it would have been optioned with a, um, a large like barn door style windscreen uh, and bags. Um, when I bought it, it was obviously wrecked. Uh, the windshield I sold and then the other bag I took off because one of the bags was destroyed. So it's kind of a little bit stripped down right now based on where it's supposed to be. But otherwise it's completely stock. And this road right here is super duper bumpy. But the big front tire even running, you know, 37 PSI like it's supposed to be, I mean it just absorbs bumps. Between that and the soft front suspension and the big uh, big seat under my butt, I mean you can just see these big potholes I'm hitting. And you know, it's, it's not really phasing the bike very much. Um, the other nice thing about this bike, uh, you know, depending on how you look at it, is it is very heavy. This bike tips the scales at almost 700 pounds. Um, and that's a lot. That's like a lot, a lot uh, for 1300. So that mass also helps with, uh, with dampening some of the ride. Obviously the trade-off on that is uh, fuel economy, acceleration, and general performance, um, you know, isn't as good as some bikes. But this is not a performance bike. This is not a bike that's meant to uh, to carve corners or or uh, you know hit a racetrack or anything. It's really meant for this what we're doing right now, which is kind of back roads Americana cruising. You know, with the windscreen on it, it does just fine on the highway. It'll you can hold it 80 miles an hour and it can pass. Um, you know, so you can use this as a as a touring bike. It makes a decent commuting bike. Um, Really the only downside of it is it's got a mechanical clutch, there's no hydraulic cylinder up here. And uh, it's a bit of a heavy clutch because it's a big torquey engine. Um, and this is the same problem I have with some of the other metric bikes, uh, big cruiser bikes like the M109R. I mean, it just kills your hand in Austin traffic, clutching in and out all the time. And it's such a cheap thing for a Yamaha to institute. Uh, it makes you really wonder why they don't use it. Um, but other than the clutch being a little heavy, that's really my only niggle. The other thing is uh, the low speed fueling map on this bike could be a little better. It's a little herky jerky in first gear. Um, but again, this is, you know, these are little things. And for a bike whose I think original MSRP 
was under ten thousand dollars i mean these are these are to be expected and of course this bike is fuel injected so it's you know it always starts no matter how cold it is outside you can run uh, 87 octane gas through it without any problem and it's got so much torque and such a broad torque band that uh i mean you can basically just leave it in third gear it's got enough legs to do 60 miles an hour you know comfortably in third gear and you can pull away from a stop sign in third gear um so the other thing is it's surprisingly easy to balance for a bike of this this uh weight <clears throat> Uh, it doesn't really feel like it pushes you around that much uh, and you know you can, you can get a little sporty with it uh, the tires are you know the tires will hold you the bike is well designed there's no kind of imbalances in the chassis so as far as the powertrain is concerned you have a 1304 uh, cc v-twin i think it makes something like 60 horsepower and 70 pound feet of torque something along those lines which is more than enough to motivate this bike to do what it needs to do um, I don't know what the gearing ratio is, it doesn't really matter, it's got a 5 speed box, it's pretty clunky, but the engagement is nice, when you shift it into a gear you can feel it. On this specific example, it doesn't like to be kicked into first gear gently, like you have to press it and hold it for, <coughs> for first gear to engage uh, from neutral. Um, which can be a little bit annoying in traffic sometimes, but it, it seems to go away when the bike heats up and this bike was wrecked uh, pretty hard. So I don't know if it's necessarily indicative of all of these motorcycles. None of the other V-Stars I've ever had had this problem. So it may just be specific to this bike. Now let's talk about value. Uh, a bike uh, like this in, in mint condition, probably worth around four grand, 4,200 bucks, something like that. And you do get a lot of motorcycle for your money. You get something that will work as a wonderfully as a commuter. Uh, you know, get you around town. I've observed about 38, 39 miles per gallon uh, over the last three tanks. Uh, I'm a little bit of an aggressive rider. Um, I could probably hyper mile it and you know go a little slower and get a little better fuel economy. So if you're doing only highway and you keep it to like 70 or 75. You'll probably see 40 miles a gallon out of this bike, uh, which I think is pretty good. Um, the tank is about three and a half gallons before the low fuel light comes on. So your real range is probably around 130 miles. Um, Cause I like to fill up pretty much as soon as the low fuel light comes on, but you should have about a half a gallon when that happens. So another 20 miles or so. So, dry tank to dry tank you could probably do 150 or 160 miles on this bike so now that we're on a nice stretch of road here let's talk about driving impressions firstly the thing that you always remember about this bike is its weight every time you hit the throttle every time you brake every time you turn it reminds you that it's a 700 pound bike that being said it's not particularly difficult to handle i uh, wouldn't hesitate to put a beginner on the bike uh, as long as they can handle the weight so the seat height is pretty low um, so most riders are going to be able to plant both feet firmly and as long as you keep it balanced uh, you're going to be fine um, this is not a bike that you want to drop on yourself though because it is very heavy but um, <coughs> the weight is also somewhat reassuring going down the road this thing is a freight train I mean, it doesn't wander, it doesn't uh, tram, line, it just, it goes in a perfectly straight line, whatever direction you point it, and it never misses a beat. It's, in a lot of ways, to me, this is, uh, you know, the motorcycle version of, I don't know, like a big, like, old school 80s or 90s GM 350 powered station wagon. You know, this is a Buick Roadmaster of motorcycles. It doesn't make a ton of power, it doesn't go all that fast, but it's dead nuts reliable, it always gets you home. And it's not that bad to ride. I mean, this is probably one of the most comfortable motorcycles I've ever ridden. Just full stop. The seat is wide and comfortable and supports your butt. The angle on the handlebars is perfect. There's no strain on your neck, your back, or your shoulders. There's plenty of space on the back for a passenger or for your gear, saddlebags. It, 
is a smooth, comfortable ride. The front suspension, nothing fancy, but it's tuned properly for the weight of the bike. I'm about 250, 260 pounds, um, and this works perfectly for me. But I have no indication that a, a lighter rider would uh, en encumber the bike in any way. Really, as long as you can keep your feet down and uh, comfortably handle the weight, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend this motorcycle to anybody. It's not going to impress. It's it's not it's not an ugly bike, but it's not a particularly handsome bike either. It's just it's a good appliance. It's a good motorcycle. It's an excellent piece of bin engineering. All the parts you can on for this bike you can find at a Yamaha dealer. And there are some cool interchangeable stuff. Like I'm pretty sure you can bolt R1 brakes to the front of this because it's the same front end that the old school um, uh, what are they called? V Max has had. I mean I think that was another one of these exactly the same bike on the way, you know, heading towards me there. And there's a ton of these online. Now, I bought this one with a busted front end. Keep in mind, if you think you're getting a really good deal on a bike that was wrecked, the front end for these big cruiser bikes are ridiculously expensive. I mean, it's going to cost you $300, $350 to buy a new front end for this bike. That's what it cost me on eBay. Um, I don't know why, because it's a conventional front end, it should be cheap, but you can buy a top-of-the-line Gixxer front end for way cheaper than you can find one for one of these bikes. But that's just the price you have to pay to get it back on the road. So, conclusion time. Do I love this bike? Probably not. But I respect the hell out of it. It's one of those bikes that it doesn't do anything that it doesn't claim to do. It doesn't pretend to be some sort of magical multi-tool that does everything. Instead, it does the things that it says it will do, and it does them well. It does them very well. And it does it at a price point that pretty much everybody uh, can access. And because of that, I give this bike four and a half stars out of five. Because <clears throat> if I mark it, if I grade it against the rubric that it was designed against, it really checks every box. I mean, could it use a little more power? Probably. Could the transmission be a little smoother? Yeah, yeah, it could. But for what it is, it does an incredibly good job. And uh, obviously, as with all the bikes, it will be listed for sale. But. In the meantime, I'm going to put some miles on this thing while the uh, Texas weather is cooperative because I never have to worry about it. I can take it anywhere I want, do anything I want with it, and I never have to worry about this bike not starting. I don't have to worry about it, you know, being uncomfortable. Uh, it gets me everywhere I need to go, and it does it uh, in style and elegance, in my opinion. With that, thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you like my channel, hit the subscribe button. Leave me a comment. As always, I'm Max. This is Max Works.